I'd like to call the meeting to order on the Tour Human Relations Commission, Thursday, January 19th. Um, so can we go to roll call, Kane, please? Marvin Major. Here. Kenny Block. Kane Feltner. Here. Sonia Holycross. Here. John Keller. Here. Todd Siebert. Ruby Villabolas. Here. Thank you. I um, <clears throat> would like to discuss the resignation of Loretta Phillips. I, I had a conversation with her regarding um, her, her work with the HRC, and I think uh, for her, she just needed more time with family, so she's going to elect to move on. She did not formally send me a letter of resignation, but she did discuss it with me over the phone. And um, so she said she'd still come to meetings and things like that, but as far as officially being a part of the HRC, she is resigning. So, would like to move um, to accept the resignation. I will. Okay. So, Marvin, all in favor? All in favor? Aye. Oh, well, I have to do a roll call. So, I have to do a roll call. <clears throat> all right. So, Marvin is making a, ma a motion and sign your second. Okay. I heard. Thank you. Well, thank you. All right, roll call for the motion um, to accept uh, Loretta Phillips' re resignation. Marvin Major? Yes. Kenny Block? Uh, yes. Kane no, yes. <laughs> Kane Feltner? Aye. Sonia Holycroft? Aye. John Keller? Yes. Todd Siebert? Yes. Ruby Villalobos? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I'd like to move to approve the July 21st and September 15th and November 17th minutes. That's a motion. Oh, all in favor? Aye. None opposed, right? Okay, and so motion also to approve the trifold brochure, which is in our packet. And it's the same one that we've been looking at for the last four meetings, yes, or two, three, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, very nice. Oh, wow, is that my cheesy grin on it? <laughs> Thank you. Are we all in favor to approve this? Um, I'll make a motion to approve the new pamphlet. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Okay. Thank you. Next is election of the chairperson. So I'm going to step down as chairman and like pass the torch to someone. Would anyone like to pick up the torch? Do we need to make a motion? In operating guidelines. Oh, do we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Thank you. Motion to approve revised operating guidelines um, amendment. I think we've all had time to go over this. Mm -hmm. Were there any other questions about it? Mm -hmm. Any? No? No, I'm good. Before we vote, though, Marvin, I think you deserve some credit and applause for initiating that and working through it. I know it's not everything, and that's how sausages get made, but I know you and Grant worked well and, and tried to get that together. At least that's, mm -hmm. you may have a different perception, but I, I appreciate your work and efforts in that. So I would like to thank you for that purpose. Uh, they needed to be revised, and they certainly, uh, you, you initiated that, and you should get credit for that. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. I, I will I'll, I'll call the question. Make a motion to approve. I'll, I'll slide you for later. <laughs> 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 motion to approve. Who second? All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. And none opposed. Okay, so now we've approved the trifold. Thank you, Salome. And election of chairperson. So again, I'm stepping down, and um, if someone would like to throw their name in the hat. You want to do it? You want to do it? I was looking at Mr. Block, are you interested in? No. I'm in the chair? Do you want to move up, John, as co-chair? Do you want to? 
Hmm? He's, already, just, he's already coached. Oh, he's got to stay coach here. Sorry. He's going to try to give you a promotion. He's so <laughs> um, Sure. I will throw my hat in the ring. All right. I will move to nominate Sinu Hollycross as chairman uh, for the upcoming uh, deal of the HRC. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we need to no. oppose? Do we didn't need to do roll call for that? Okay. All right. Um, keep it moving. Ooh, I'm sorry. <coughs> Next meeting, it's all hers. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna wait a minute at that point. <laughs> um, yeah, you're still a member, right? I'm you're still a member. Like, okay. yeah, yeah, until wait. the next meeting, you know. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. Um, new HRC member suggestions. I know we discussed this last meeting. Um, any suggestions? We need to pass. Oh, go ahead. I have some suggestions. One, though, is still kind of making sure that their life, you know, aligns right. But Vernon Witt and Donald Shape yep. would be my two suggestions. And I will second those as well. Thank you. Yes. What's your first name? Vernon Witt, W H I T T, first of Miami County ESC. Um, and then Donald Chavis is. I don't remember his title, but he's with Abbott Laboratories. I don't know Mr. Witt, but Mr. Chavis has done a good job on mm -hmm. Juneteenth committee and yes, idea job. and some other things. So, I, are there for uh, citizens? They mm -hmm. are. Yes. Yep. Okay. I believe that um, Robin has their app. Well, if the applications were kept from the beginning, they would have an application already, and and anyone else can offer any other people as well. There was um, <clears throat> there was one citizen that um, identifies as Native American, um, like has really close cultural ties and has done a lot of education. And I can't think of the young man's name, but he said he was interested. So I'm going to go back to, he works at pharmacy at CVS to see if he's still interested. And I was looking for like an LGBTQ, somebody elderly, you know, trying to get different demographics. Did we I know we discussed last time yeah. about Mrs. York. Was it Mrs. York? Darla York. Darla York. Oh, yeah. Darla We've York discussed well. about her. I think we should, could reach out to her and yeah. if she was interested and applied as well. She's amazing. Amazing. But right now, um, I think has applications from Donald Chambers and Vernon Witt. Yeah, and Darla. And Darla York. Yes, they've all And Darla prior. York. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. Are everyone's microphones on? I think I so. Oh, I know. Bit closer to my mouth. Is that better? Urban, famously, you can never hear him, even with a microphone. Yeah. Yeah. You have to. That's normal. I had a hard time hearing him. Yeah, you did. He's a gentle giant. Sorry. Not a giant. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. Does anyone else have any suggestions? Not right now. No. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Gentlemen, I'm thinking about it. Um, I don't know. He come before uh, probably about two years ago. Who's that? Juan Fernandez, I think. Oh, um, he owns Full Life Chiropractic. Yeah, Doctor yeah. Juan. That's who he's talking about. Yeah. Doctor Juan. Okay. I don't know if he applied or not, or. I think he did. I think he did. Actually. Did he? Yeah. It's Fernandez is his last name. Yeah. Okay. But oh, that's the gentleman that grew up in Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Any any other thoughts, comments? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. And then so the next item was police interaction and. Um, They've been doing a good job as far as I'm concerned. I'd like to think that I pay attention. Good calls. Um, trying to think they just finished. Am I correct in saying CIP training was just done or was that county? Sorry. The Detroit County, sorry. Detroit County Board just finished the training. 
was uh, 20 some officers um, in the December. Gotcha. You know, I'm coming out of April. Nice, nice. What's the IT training? Yeah, I think that was you. Uh, oh, my thoughts are different, I think. For, um, officers dealing and interacting with people with health needs. Um, Mr. President, I, before we go, I, I think we talk, kind of skipped a step, so I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. So do we want to make a recommendation to the are, are we do Are we vetting those names, or are those the two names that came out, are those the names that we, the first two names, Mr. Witt and Mr. Chavis, are those the names that we want to recommend to the mayor? We need to make a recommendation to the mayor for people to go on here. So I just want to make sure, I mean, maybe we want to do more research. We had four names that sort of percolated I, I there, think, but I, I just, I don't, I want to make sure we're, we're not skipping that step. If we have somebody in mind and we want to make them a member of this board, the process would be we would make a recommendation to the mayor, then the mayor would do the appointment. I think based on my knowledge of the three, I know for sure Donald Chavis is interested and the application is in. So I would like to make a motion to recommend Donald Chavis uh, to make Oda to join the uh, Human Relations Commission. And, and I would second that. I know Mr. Chavis as well, and I know he wants to be involved and, and do that. I think he would be a, he's a younger gentleman. He's got some kids in the community. I think he would be a, a great addition to the, to the board. So I would second that. Uh, that doesn't exclude the other people from being involved. I don't know how many slots the mayor wants to fill or where they are, but we do need to make a recommendation to the mayor if we're going to proceed in that fashion. I, I'm not familiar with who this gentleman is. So. Which one? Mr. Chavis. Mr. Chavis. Um, again, born and raised here, yeah. very successful, raising his children. Um, I would say let's suggest them all or three of them or whatever you guys decide and allow the mayor to be able to look through and she can discern. When, when you say all, what, what names are you talking about? Mr. Right? Witt, Mr. Chavis, Mrs. York. Okay. Um, and if you want to, to Mr. Fernandez, that's fine. I mean, that's up to, to you. I, I, the only reason I'm only nominating Donald is just because I know that he has said as of last week that he is still interested. Okay. And okay. so that's the only reason because if she does choose to accept, then we know we have someone that is knowing of yeah. this process. I just think it's helpful if we give her a variety only because of historically not being able to have a quorum you know what i mean if we get a couple and then she can choose i don't why don't we see have more than I don't know. why don't we have ask salome to reach out to the mayor and then find out i would tell you i would think knowing her fairly well that she would prefer us to give a name instead of her do the legwork and make mm -hmm. a recommendation yeah. i think that's kind of why she asked us to make a recommendation to her um but I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to call him and speak with him, or if you yeah. would like to do that, Ms. Chair. Um, whatever you want. Do like an interview. Fine. I know before what we did is we recommended and then, like Todd said, the mayor follows through and does. So I'm fine to recommend Mr. Witt, Mr. Chavis, and Mrs. York as well. I'm, I'm only hesitating about Mr. Finneas because I haven't had a conversation with one in like two years. So. Like you're saying, based on the premise, I would right. feel comfortable to recommend him because recommend I don't know if he wants the position. Do we want to recommend more than what you appoint? Yeah, I mean, we or could. Yeah. And if they have I mean, five. Yeah, I would like to be nine intentional. Nine positions, we can only bring yeah. two more on at this point. Yeah, I would like to intentionally try to <clears throat> make sure that we're covering diversity, right? I would like to recommend enough people, but... The, the only thing I would like to be sure of is anyone that comes on to the commission understands mm. what they're going to have to do. I agree. And the, the, and the recommendations not, I gave you are people that literally... They're, they're going to help. They, yeah, they're phenomenal. Right. They get things done, I mean, personally in my world, and I see them professionally in their worlds. They're, okay. And they're upstanding leaders. Transparency, you know, you don't have to worry about any 
shady stuff going on or nothing. So, yeah. It's always a plus. It's always a plus, yes. So are so we again, making a recommendation or are we I going to have Salome yeah. come back to us and determine what's going on? Because there's a motion and a second. And I made a motion, but you've made a motion and I seconded it. Sonia now wants yes. yeah. to and I'll modify be for that motion. Mr. Witt and Mrs. York. Okay, so we're going to make a recommendation to the mayor to approve Donald Chavis, Vern Witt, and Darley. Well, only if I accept Sonia's modification of my motion. Uh, only if Kane accepts. Sonia's modification of her mo of uh, his motion. So we can't we can't we can't have our guidelines that we just passed only allow nine members. So we can't put we can recommend to the mayor, but she's going to have to narrow that down because right. we can only have she nine can, members. No, I think oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah she's two got more. some options. Right. She gave us some options. I mean, I'm comfortable with any of those two out of the three, right? Well, I think we can recommend all three. I mean, as I'm, I'm not, I need to understand what her process is going to be. Is she going to reach out to them and yeah. meet with them before she approves them, or mm -hmm. like she did all of us? Yeah, Mr. Block, time. remember we sent an email and then they completed, he's here. Mm -hmm. okay. You were the only one that has been onboarded in this way. That's why yeah. I'm using I remember. an example. Yeah. Okay, so again, can, can we approve these three and then the, the mayor can... Kane decide. already made a motion and Todd seconded it. He already put Donald Chase's recommendation. Why not Mike. do the same thing for the other two and then we'll vote? Okay. okay. Yep. Thank so you. Makes sense. All right, so I'd like to make a motion to approve Vernon Wet. I'll second. Okay, and all in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed. Did we finish the Donald Chavis one? Yeah, we, we have to pass have Donald to, Chavis I, I first. We, passed Donald we, did. we did. We did. Did we vote on Donald yes, Chavis? We did. Okay. You wanted to amend it, but we're just okay. It so we have Mr. Witt and a motion. You seconded. Mm -hmm. All in favor. Aye. 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 <laughs> Donald Chavis has already been done. Right. And then so you wanted to do somebody else on it. York. Mrs. York. Yeah. And I'll second Mrs. York. I don't know who she is, but we'll. And I'll second this as you were. She was a kindergarten teacher at Kyle for a very long time. Oh, cool. All in favor? Oh, sorry. Aye. Not Aye. 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 None opposed. All right, so we have three candidates to pass on to the mayor. Right on. Okay. Um, now we're back to police interaction. Now we're back to police interaction. Okay, so the, the police interaction is something that I, I just, you know, again, I think you guys have all heard the story, right? I, I think that there has to be some... Um, thought process behind teaching children how to interact with police officers when they're pulled over. I think that's a lot of attention in America. It continues to be. And um, so I would like to make a recommendation that we try to um, help introduce some legislation to um, for, for, for the state of Ohio to, um, within driver's training classes for children or anyone getting their license new in the state to have to go through some type of training. And I know that's not going to happen at the mayor's level. Um, it would have to go through other senators and politicians in the state, but um, I, I do think maybe we could at least look at a trial for the city of Troy. Um, because it's happening in other states and it's very successful. And um, even the language that police officers use with people like, for my safety and for your safety, would you please exit your vehicle? Just so they know <clears throat> what's happening, why we're doing it. I, I continue to feel and see cases all around the uh, US where there's just issues, and I think that they can be resolved a lot easier if we had a better line of communication and education when dealing with police officers. So, anyways, that's just my thoughts and recommendation, and um, I don't know that we can resolve anything, you know, at, at this level, but it's something that I would like uh, help in going to our state senator and maybe having a, a long discussion, you know, regarding that matter, so. 
I would imagine, I mean, the state senator would probably make time for us if Salome wanted to reach out to him on behalf of us and see if he would coordinate a time. I mean, he lives in Tip City. I would imagine he would be willing to come and, and talk if you wanted us to reach out at a future meeting to see if there was something there. I don't know that the city can right. do, anything do anything as far as a, a legislative body to an administrative process by the state. Right. Um, but that's been talked to. I mean, you and Mr. Masarian have been working on I mean, I remember those conversations way back at the uh, uh, senior c citizen. So I know that that's something that the police thinks uh, is a viable at least discussion point right. and this committee has felt it as a viable discussion point so I I don't oppose having continual communication but I do think it would probably have to come on the state level I don't I, I'm not I, would agree I, I don't think the city could could do something on that so um, I don't know Salome would you I would you reach out to Mr. Huffman with a letter to see if he would come talk to the committee in the next two meetings or so do we need to make a motion to approve it? I don't I think so. Okay. That's not a okay. not an action like that. point. <clears throat> just becoming, I, I just think it's good. I think it's good to have that state presence and to also be that voice for those kids. I, I, again, I don't think we're having issues in Troy. I don't. Right. You know, yeah. but the whole point is just like we don't want Troy to show up on the news, right? And I, I think if we're a beacon of light to other cities, that may be. Right. Helpful in getting the conversation That's started true. or continued. Looks like. Are any of the drive? Are we familiar with the driving schools if they are introducing anything to you know students? I've had two How kids go through it. One is going through it right now, and it's not being discussed at all. Mm -hmm. They don't even get enough. Hot. I mean, truthfully, like you want to talk validity and driver's ed. We got our teenagers dying on 75 before they even get out of Troy. Mm -hmm. So the question of driving hours on the highway, how do you mm -hmm. interact with police, I think is extremely valid. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Let's come to the report. Okay, thoughts, comments? No. I, I, like the, I, I like the idea. I guess I'm, I try to think about how, how's the best way to go about it, to ask, you know, our state representative to come in if we don't have a little bit more context to the dis are, do we have enough context to the discussion? Do we need to put more together? Do we need to solidify the idea a little bit more? I, I just feel like it's kind of open right now, and I I like to. Well, so here here's what the state of Illinois did. There was a police officer who was I forget his name. It's either Johnson or Robinson, but black guy that was a police officer for. 25 years, he retired, and he worked with state senators to introduce a bill to change. Um, thank you. So he worked with the state senators there to, to introduce a bill to uh, pass a law where any student that was getting his driver's license, his or her, they had to go through this course. Um, and it's basically about police interaction, the, the entire course, like how you should discuss um, anything with an officer that approaches you while you're in your vehicle, while you're outside of your vehicle. You know, it, it was all based on the driver's training. Um, and from his thought process, it was highly successful, saved lives. And um, yeah, I, I think it's much needed. It's just how, how do we go about that in a I, it, I think it has to go yeah. through a senator. I think that's where it will start. Okay. So do we have all that to present to him? Yeah. 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 Um, to present. yeah. Um, By the next quarterly well, like, yeah. meeting, yeah. we can. And and I think I mean he <clears throat> how the legislature will work is he would really have to embrace it, and then his committee so and his his group would would work on how to write it. So I think we probably by next uh, meeting at least could have some discussion with him as to the validity of that. And You know, if you and Mr. Masarian can work on some stuff, like you, you have the concept, I know you've had some communication. So I, I think we probably have enough to plant the seed, John. 
Yeah, I think, I think to have the sample of what they've done in Illinois would be helpful mm -hmm. framework uh, and, to start and, the conversation. And I guess, you know, my, my introduction of it was probably a little, and I kind of sense that from what everyone's saying, is my thought process is this. Anything that we can get done to help that whole situation, either for our city or for our county or for our state, would be wonderful. Absolutely. And I'm willing to work with whoever, wherever, to make some progress with that because it's definitely needed. And so we can also um, do a public statement, depending on which committee that this would need to be presented to at the state legislator. So depending, I, I don't know all the committees off the top of my head. Um, we would be able to submit a writing, a written statement that we would um, say in front of the committee, and then they can take that up. Okay. Um, and that's open to all public. Many organizations do it, and committee members will just accept it. And then you come during a certain date to the state house, and then you'll speak at the podium. I like okay. that approach. Considering yeah, that, and that, that's per per norm. Yeah. Yeah. And that way we're ensured mm -hmm. to be heard and if you get to. Right. I'm right. considering previous controversies. Come on, guys, help me out here. You know, and we want to make sure that we're heard and we're taken seriously. Right. I mean, Huffman will be a great gateway to say, is this viable to submit to, to yes. the State House mm -hmm. yes. or the Senate and how we may move forward with the legislator and at the state in Columbus. Right and then go from there and submitting um, proof comments yeah. on behalf of whoever speaks on the HRC. And you know me, how I feel. The kids that can't afford drivers that are the kids that are being killed. So don't forget that, because I'm still plugging to get it back in the school. That way, no kid that's poor or whatever doesn't miss it and still dies. Yeah. Because in my opinion, those are the highest at-risk kids. Driver's Ed is crazy expensive now, yeah. and I think that's why generationally some families don't drive and don't know how to have that interaction. Yeah. And do things that are incorrect according to yeah. the education law. Yeah. 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 yeah, so I mean, even, you know, not pie in the sky, but providing a scholarship for, for a kid to take driver's ed that otherwise would never might be the first driver in their own home. That still goes on today. We could make an impact in our city. I guess the, the other question, and this may be a question for our, our chief here, do we have information on the number of citations to kids under the age of 19 and then those that are just pulled over in general? And then out of all those numbers, if any issues have come from those. So in your report, Chief, is this zero to eight? Well, hopefully they're not zero, right? But does it break down well, age? Yeah, I, I know it's or do I just I look at the demographic like down yeah. here? Because it has um, by race. And by gender. And then 15 to 20 right, and we could certainly so probably awesome. pull up statistics fairly easily by age as okay. far as citations and warnings go. Yeah, so as far that. as what what happened in that that traffic stop and whether or not it escalated to a situation for somebody under 18 or anybody for that matter to a point where there was a use of force, it would probably, I mean, we have a separate list of all of our uses of force, but we would have to read every single traffic stop um, report to find out if, you know, and, and probably actually have to watch almost every single body camera video because sometimes people get upset and yell and scream at officers and they get a warning. Um, sometimes the officers don't necessarily mention the full extent at somebody, you know, getting upset in an officer or yelling and screaming and, and vice versa. We have officers that lose their cool every once in a while and maybe raise their voice at their, or yell and scream at the person that gets stopped. So that's not always, you know, that's not documented anywhere that I can search. It's Got not it. a checkbox or a yes, no that I can say, you know, tell me every time somebody verbally right. was combative to you, verbally combative. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
Would a survey be something maybe that the officers, maybe we can get information like from a survey? Do you think the officers would be able to say, you know, these are, this is the age group that these doesn't, you know, understand or disrespectful or doesn't, you know, because I know a lot of officers work, you know, a patient and yeah, I mean, you're just kind of basing that on just kind of officers' general feelings. Then, you know, are you know, you know, do you have more problems with people in this age group or, or above this age group with being verbally confronted towards you or not? Uh, you know, it'd be a difficult thing to to express uh, in a survey too. I think of officers because of it, it's just kind of people's gut feelings, and you know, you've got the officers that are like, well, in my day, everybody was respectful to the police. And then you have officers, <laughs> on the other hand, that are like, you know, well, it's just different these days, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, I, I did want to kind of talk about, you know, uh, Joel and I were kind of discussing a little bit the driver's ed. And I don't know if it's Ohio code that requires, you know, the driver's ed classes. We do believe that it's a part of the curriculum of driver's ed. And we were discussing, I know uh, the gentleman, he's a retired Troy officer that's a coordinator for driver's ed for AAA. Mm -hmm. We could reach out to him and maybe see what AAA's curriculum is. I think it's all online now. And then the driver's ed in car is the only in-person training right. they do. And then we've got wheelers right here on the square that we might be able to reach out and see what their curriculum is. But we believe that there's at least a section of that curriculum that deals with police interaction. Um, we could be wrong, but and and I don't know if it's mandated by state law. That's like you know our training. A lot of you know the, the specific hours are mandated by state law. I'm sure there's certain things in the driver's ed training that is mandated by state law, and then some of it is probably AAA or Wheeler's Driving School says we also want to fill this time with these uh, voluntary hours that are on specific topics. Uh, but we also, we're in front of the kids, not every grade officially, but we're in front of the kids at the school, at least in Troy City Schools, uh, in the fifth, seventh grade, and, we, and that's the D.A.R.E. curriculum that talks yep. a lot about making good choices. It's not about just drug prevention anymore. It's a lot about uh, peer pressure, bullying, and making good choices. In addition, our high school SRO, has always gone to the health classes, which is either your freshman or sophomore year. I think there's a little bit of, you, you can schedule it whatever year you want to. Uh, but the, the there's not a set curriculum for what the high school SRO does in that. It's, right. it's kind of, it, it, there, he's probably got an outline of what he goes over with. I, or, Tilly had just retired last year. We have uh, Zach Hook, uh, Officer Hook is in the high school now. I haven't seen his outline or if he's adjusted Officer Tilly's outline, but they, they discuss several things and they use the, uh, the DUI goggles. I know that's a part of the class. Uh, police interaction is a part of the class. You know, and the kids usually, when, when Officer Tilly got in front of them, had tons of questions. And so a lot of it is just questions and answering right. questions. And he could probably be in that class for a whole week. But, you know, the school has other curriculums and mandates, right. and so I think that he only gets one day in the health class. Okay. Is, is there any possibility that we could see his curriculum? And, again, we can't tell anybody what to do, but if we could maybe do our diligence and research, provide some suggestions, and then also get his feedback, like, what does he think about when driver's ed, you know, police across the board, did it change drastically when driver's ed left school? Is it truly harder? Do do they really freak out when you pull, you know, is it necessary? <laughs> well, I don't think he probably remembers when driver's ed left school. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the officers, you know, uh, in general, like, is it a big deal or? Yeah, I, I don't know if we have enough officers that remember driver's ed being in school to be able to compare. Or, or but, uh, and like I said, I think I think it's more of an outline more than a curriculum and and it's it's a lot of question based because when when the officers get in front of these kids in the high school in the class it, it's all about oh well can I do this is this legal why do officers do that yeah and so, um, I, I yeah I, I think it's a it's a very loose outline but okay. uh, I mean that would 
I mean, you could beginning of advocating, right, and talking about how mm -hmm. to... Well, we, we could, could start as small as, um, this is y your step, I'm just, this is just an idea, even as small as having an assembly at Troy High School and on, um, you know, how to interact with police officers, if that's something the principal would be willing for you guys to do. And then it could be mm -hmm. like police, you know, working in the community and speaking out to our youth. And that's always an option. I know our school, I know probably more than likely you guys do something with elementary. I know the fire <coughs> department does. Um, I remember at least when I was in elementary, the fire department came out with that mobile house and then we got to crawl through the fire and dial our home number and tell them our address. That was a lot of fun. I remember that. Certainly, that'd be more up to the school. Mm -hmm. um, their hours are precious as far as oh, yeah. the amount of training that they have to do and the state mandates. Uh, you know, <coughs> I, I feel like we do a good job of getting in front of the kids, like I said, in the fifth, seventh, and in the high school okay. um, health classes. I mean, and that could be incorporated into those courses. And I believe it, it is to a certain extent already. Sean, did the, the kids at the stadium, do you know if they still get to participate and have to do this health credit? So I just want to make sure we're getting the kids that, you know, aren't mainstreamed if you don't know the answer, I totally would understand because you're not in the school all yeah. day. But maybe we need to figure that out. Yeah, I believe health class is required by all Yeah. Well, I didn't students. know. You go to computer-based learning. I didn't know if that component was taken out and you're just on a computer then and not having that experience with the officer. Yeah, again, I'd have to ask accurate. Officer Hook if, if okay. he has any interaction with the kids in the stadium program, if he does anything down there okay. with them. Okay, yeah, will you just let me know when, whenever? Yep. Because that would be worth a conversation, right, making sure that the most at-risk kids have that exposure still. I'm just thinking of little baby steps that we could maybe be proactive uh, with. I'm looking at Kane because he's the, probably the latest one to have attend driver's ed and might remember more I than know. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and he's in the school, so. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I have a question for you, and it's a very serious question. Uh, I've read through your accident and analysis, and I've noticed that you have defined mature as 55. <laughs> as a 58-year-old man in this community who does not perceive himself as being mature, <laughs> what, what, how did you, uh, no, I'm, yeah. <laughs> this, that's actually straight from the state's website that uh, anybody so can so get like on to. So like to Mr. Yeah, Howard and it's, it's, how it's how called, <laughs> yeah, it's called OSTAT, okay. and there's a link to yeah, it at the right. Highway Patrol's website, and it's a great tool for us to pull stats off of. <laughs> So I'll, I'll read. So gray hair included. <laughs> we recently interviewed a candidate that talked about his, a candidate for police officer that talked about his older friends, and I begged the question, well, how old is older? And he said, I don't know, 30? <laughs> you crossed him off, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I was just kidding. Yeah, that's my poor judgment. I I think as we, we come back to it, like if you like if you if you look at the police report, you see, um, I guess these are all violations, right? You mm -hmm. relate at 15 to 24 years old or 23. Mm -hmm. These and are just accidents. My, yeah, this this accidents. is just accidents, right? Correct. Accident. Yeah. Oh, these are accidents. So these aren't violations. Those are oh, just violations. Accidents. Accidents. No, you're looking for traffic violations as well. So 15 to 19. Case at the bottom. 15 to 24, 23. So there's some overlapping there, right? I'm just trying to understand. How yeah, team related and youth related are overlapped. Yeah. And then they'll look at 15 of Then the mature people, the line goes all the way to the end of the page. Do you have a question for Sean? Highlighting, probably. Highlighting. Mr. Black, you, you, I've known you for a long time. I don't know we got too much room to talk on that. Uh, no, that's what said highlighting. Uh, <laughs> I was just, just trying to understand the numbers here. So, like, if you, you looked at all these accidents, is there a total number of accidents and how many teenagers are 
to send your notice. I believe on that form there's a, a list that says uh, injury, non-injury, and there it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. and it should have the total. Total of 57. But these are just minor injury, injury possible, or property damage, not just. Yeah, that, that's all of our crashes. During that month, I believe we wouldn't have had any fatalities. And there are some accidents, right, where there's nothing that, you know, you might have like a kid that hit someone on the bumper and then there's no scratches or anything. Are, are those also in here as well? Uh, generally, if you call us, if the crash is on the street uh, and there's any damage, our officers are going to take the report. The okay. amount of damage that is required by an OH1 is very low, and the way car repairs cost anymore, you know, we if, if you have a scratch on your bumper, that is enough to basically have a report. Uh, you know, obviously sometimes people will not call the police and those reports obviously aren't generated. Uh, we do a different form. We do uh, basically an incident report for private property crashes. The state does not want them. Uh, they don't count them. So if you're in the Kroger's parking lot and somebody backs into you, then that would not be reflected in that report. Okay. Do you have any idea how many you have? Not right off the top of my no. head without okay. sitting down and running the numbers. Okay. Thank you. I was just wondering. So if you're looking at 15 to 24, it's 23, so about a little less than half, right? Yeah. Our, our kids. 20. So I, I think that kind of speaks to <coughs> the, the necessity of kids understanding how to interact with police officers. I, that, that, was, that, that was the only point I was trying to make. I think that's uh, very clear. <laughs> Too bad. So, I'm sure the, they don't chart it, but... I'm sure Joel can attest to how many times a mother called you to discipline her child, right? So even teaching them what their role is, that skews that relationship as well. So I'm sure there's an ex exponential amount. So it kind of speaks to even parents don't necessarily know how to fully always interact with the police as well. So. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, future meetings. Monthly. At least. What was that? What are you guys? I said at least. At least. Yeah. Yeah. Monthly meetings. Works for me. Monthly does. I don't know about you guys. Every Thursday of the month. Every Thursday. 6.15 p.m. Is that work for February 16th. Okay. Is that work for Utah? February 16th? Mm-hmm. We're talking about um, going to monthly meetings. So that would be the first one. That would be March 16th. So we're going from quarterly back to monthly? That's what they were talking about. That's why I, I, you heard. I guess I would like to hear some reason to do monthly meetings. Oh, I'm just agreeing with Mark. I don't care what you do. Okay, okay. I can go quarterly. He's still chairman for another week. So what... Um, can I get clarification? Can the HRC call any special meetings, like in between the quarterly meetings? You've been meeting um, every two months. Yes. yes. Every two months? Yes, and between those meetings, you can always, yes, call special meetings. I would make a motion that we continue with where we're at, where we're at bi monthly, and then if we feel as if we need to do um, a meeting the next month, so if we feel as if we have um, a substantial reason to meet in February, then I think we should. Okay. Um, but I don't think we should change that monthly. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm okay for that, but I this month and a half, two months to think about really what initiatives we would like to get into, and then based upon that, maybe we need to revisit or subcommittee meetings. So before we move on to that, do are we meeting February? Are we calling a special meeting for February 16th, 
or are we moving to still meet in March? I think it would be beneficial if we could meet February 16th and talk about initiatives, planning, what are we going to do? And then again, we could gauge to every two months or subcommittees to get whatever done. I just, I don't have a problem meeting quarterly, but I do have a problem when we're not moving, right, mm -hmm. to our initiatives. And so then quarterly just becomes dead time, dead space. I mean, we're all busy, granted, but again, with our initiative <coughs> here, I just don't want us to get, I've heard a lot from the community, HRC, you're still having that thing? That, that still exists, right? So I don't want us to become not relevant, but I also don't want to just have meetings to have meetings. Do you want to make like the motion? to be productive. But Stein, that's the whole issue that, that we've talked about for forever. We're not an initiative creating board. That, that's not the HRC. No, but we have initiatives, and we well, had, what, three initiatives last year? We had a history initiative, we had the walking tour, and we have something that's slipping my right. mind. So that's what I'm talking about. Like, what work are we going okay, to do? Okay, not advocacy. No, I do. No, because that, that's that's what that's what we, that's what we, we have. We have a different ad, finish. That part's fine. That's I maybe I misunderstood what you're saying. That if we want to do initiatives to go to the city and say here's something that we should do, like uh, like we've talked about, I agree with that. It, there are different boards that existed that actually came out of here that their role is to be advocacy, and that's not. Right, but the HRC's our, role our is history with HRC members, along with some historians, we need to complete those projects. Yeah, I just don't want those to go. Maybe initiatives is the wrong word to use, but yeah, I'd, I I'd like to, right to meet yeah. to say, okay, who's going to split off or do what? Since we've lost members, and we just need to revamp that group. In fact, we've kind of Patrick is, Kennedy is working on. Um, getting all the information together so we can reapply for the Ohio History Marker. Then talking to Patrick at the Black History Walk meeting, he wants to compile it to give it to Ben so Ben can write there. So yeah, I just I want to make sure again, like I'm just not sitting on a history meeting so make without motion. all the members. I want you guys to be able to be involved and advocate. So we're going to make the motion. Okay. To make the motion. Yes, I'll make that meeting. motion to meet next month. Is that the right way to say it? I second. So, Sonia <laughs> is making a motion for a special meeting February 16th at 6.15, Thursday, February 16th. And I'll work with Salome to come up with the agenda so that it's intentional to this conversation, that we're not getting back in the weeds or doing things okay. that we shouldn't be doing. But, again, we have Troy Foundation money. We, we just need to honor it. Keep down that path. And you second? I second. And then you also have your motion that you've been working on that you just talked about too. I don't want any any of the things to just Disband. fall off. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. And then so we're gonna meet every other month. We're going to but February. February. We're going to meet February, and then we're going to discuss what we got, and then we're fine. And then our schedule, regular schedule meeting is yeah. March. Yeah. The yes. Th Thursday, March. Okay. All right. Are we good? Are we on commission member mm -hmm. comments? Yep. Yeah. Commission member comments. We are here. Kane, would you like to? Have yes. A word? So I um, had a discussion with Marvin and also Sonia about um, the viability of the commission and what future plans look like um, as a commission. And um, so one thing we discussed is within our bylaws, it, we make recommendations to the mayor. And um, I think we've talked about it a lot and talked about um, doing some type of surveys and data collection. I think that the HRC, to have its viability, whether you know we're here for it the next five, ten years, mm -hmm. that it still holds the viability, and we do some type of data collection, yearly data collection that we submit to the mayor at the end of every year, um, and then make a recommendation on that data. Um, and that can either change yearly, or it can um, 
you know, depending on whatever the study is, it, it can uh, go on for the next two years and submit it, the data. Um, so that could be anything. It could be on policing. It could be on the uh, affordable housing. Affordable housing. It could be on the environment downtown. And just to make anything, you know, that's relevant just to give in a recommendation. And it, the recommendation could be simple as the data came back and said that our Troy downtown events are culturally welcoming and, um, you know, beloved by the community and brings in, you know, whatever amount of money. And so good job. And, you know, it, it, the recommendation could be anything. But I think it should be a sole duty, no matter who's on the commission, some data study is done through the year is submitted to the mayor with a recommendation every year. So no matter the projects we want to do, the history or going to the state, whatever that may be that year, we have one job and one role no matter what, and that is to collect some type of survey data and submit it to the mayor with a recommendation yearly. And that's fine. I think it's incorporated in Article 2, Paragraph A of the operating agreement. I think that's exactly, I mean, the word research is the first word yep. that's in there. I think yep. that's, uh, uh, so I would second your motion. <laughs> All right. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Put some legs to your <laughs> so we can discuss that next week. Sounds good. Any other comments? I have. Uh, go ahead. Do you have one? Mm -hmm. Oh, I have one. And again, this is. Uh, I brought this up at at the idea meeting, um, <coughs> but there's been a change in ownership of the Mayflower. It's a privately owned bu building. We all know that. I may have brought this up when HRC started a long time ago, but I think I have shared it with some members of the committee. Uh, but there is a plaque outside of the theater in Columbia, Missouri, where my son goes to school, that reads, lest we, never, lest we forget never again until the late 1950s, I think that's what that says, persons of color were not permitted to enter the Missouri theater by the front door Entrance is only permitted through this back door and then only for seating in the balcony. And that struck me when I saw it three years ago, and it does bring back why we're here, and I would like permission from the HRC uh, to work with the idea group to explore uh, whether Mr. Scott and Mr. Martin and uh, would be uh, interested in having a plaque like that installed at the Mayflower, I think it would. Uh, you, you know, they're they're changing. They're they're doing a lot of cool things there, and I think it would. You, you know, I think that there could be some good synergy there with that aspect as well. But I didn't want to do that without talking to the HRC or the, the idea board said said that it was okay. But I do think it really probably would be stronger coming from the. Human Relations Commission, so uh, I, I will be glad to share that plaque with you. Um, and certainly, I understand if people, get, you know, have their own opinions as to whether that's appropriate or not. But I thought it, from personally, I thought it was a, a well-written memorial plaque. I don't know the history of the Mayflower Building. Is there that history? Uh, Miss Phillips yes. was very yeah. strong. I've heard that, that before too. That that, that history yeah. existed. Yeah. I think it would be probably all of our buildings. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think so. it's yeah. like yeah. the nature of the beast. I, yeah. I don't know. Well, John, I, I, I would think so too, but I think Ms. that Phillips, needs to be. Yeah, Miss Phillips was researched I mean, to make sure. They're saying very specifically yeah, about the door. Yeah. I think that that yeah, would this, give this, that power. Yeah, yeah she was very. She was very explicit. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, I would yeah. not do anything yeah. that was not historically accurate. Mm -hmm, I don't right. think that that would solve any any issues. But uh, and we can talk about it later. I mean, I don't know how long it's going to take them to build it up or whatever. But I thought that would be, you know, we could do it. I don't. What's up? Can you send it in the group text? I'm yeah. just curious. I think I need to just read it and like sit with it for a minute. Because again, you know. It's that emotional drama first, and then it settles. I think I just need a minute for it to, That's exactly to well. settle yeah. to even be able to call me. Well, I, I, I had the yeah. pleasure of uh, getting to hear it before at the Idea Troy meeting, um, and I 
and I, what we discussed is uh, just that the, uh, I can't remember the church's name again, over here. Um, oh, yeah, the Presbyterian, Presbyterian the Church, church within where they have the chains that one of us, um, that someone who was enslaved, not a slave, someone who was enslaved, who had um, chains on and then they had broke free and then they're, they're at the church, to have the weight and see it, I think if this is the same thing, to memorialize it and have the weight to see see it, that this is real, and it happened here too, um, and I think that it, I think memorializing that is really important for people, you know, who are just walking down the street and, you know, They've going throughout their day to just to stop and see it, it, and, you know, give them that moment to think about stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that's why we memorialize 9-11, you know, even though you might not be thinking it as soon as you cross down that road. It's there to mem- memorialize it and just to stop and remember. Well, I don't uh, think there's. Oh, I'm sorry. Of where we came from. I just. I don't think there's any rush, and I just texted it to. I think everybody that's in the, the group. So if nobody gets it. Let me know. But uh, take a take a gander, read it. It struck me three years ago. I took a picture of it. I've kept it. Mm-hmm. So every it time I see a color sign, I pause like that too. But I mean, if we're if we're intentional with the walking QR tour, anything that can oh, also yeah. help, you know what I mean? Cause it's just it depending yeah. on how you. You remember when Higher Learning came out? They were rioting in the movie theaters mm-hmm. because they could not handle all that emotional. So that's yeah, any way that we can soften it, and also again, always, but it's a remembrance so You're we right, don't do that again. The Holocaust is beautiful with those. Memorial, so maybe I need to research It's still that. traumatic any time you think about yeah. it. I mean, at least me, me and my skin, every time I look at something like that, it's traumatic for me. Yeah. Right. And it, it's, um, <clears throat> you know, it, it's, it's not a light conversation, but I, I think it's necessary for people to understand the history. Right. Right. So, well, and that's why I brought it up, because obviously I, I view it different than, than other people would, yeah. would perhaps see it. So I want to make sure we're everybody's on on board before we would pursue it. So it's been passed out and... So can I make a motion to add this to our Next agenda for that February 16th, 16th meeting? I'll second that. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Thank you for Maple. that. Just to add to that, I think, you, you know, if you walk around certain places in Germany, mm-hmm. there's all kind of black stuff. I know. What was going on there yeah. and who was living there and what happened and names and it's and I think it's, it's the whole culture, not just the plaque, right? The whole culture complements and School helps you kind of understand and heal from that. So when we're doing all of these things together, it it does make sense. Yeah. yeah I, I just got to keep up with the young folks, you know. Half of them, half of them like they want it, and then half of them are like, no, keep your aggression, let us start new. So just trying to figure out how to do this and make it. You can't make everybody happy, but mm-hmm. you're going to you're gonna offend somebody. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> sure. The thing we need to do is remember our past mm-hmm. and honor it. Yeah. You know, we're not trying to criticize nobody. We're just right. trying to inform people of stuff that happened in the past and, you yeah. know, heal from it. Exactly. Yeah. Scott Strayer bought that building, too. Who? Scott Strayer. You mentioned Scott. Is it Scott? Any other oh, Tony um, Scott. comments from commission members? I'm sorry, what was that? Any other comments? Oh, no, thank you. Thanks for the time. Thank you for sharing. That's great. Okay, um, I'd like to open it up for public comments. Hey, Evening, Marvin. How are you? Crestwood Drive, how are you? Awesome. Good, good, good. A lot of good work I'm seeing here tonight. A lot has been said about African American culture, but I want to bring up a culture that I think we're forgetting about in this region. And some of you mentioned a young man over at CBS, and I'm glad you did. Because I'm talking about a Native American heritage, not just in the city of Troy, but in Miami County. In fact, did you know that? A large Native American tribe once settled in this area. I'm talking about the Miami, the tribe which gave this county its name. I don't think I don't think we do enough to honor their input into our 
existence. So what I would like to encourage this council, this commission to take a look at in the future, we've got a while to think about this, in November, and I'm going to have to, uh, I'll have to look up, I think it's November, I'll have to look it up and get back with some of you on this, there is a month dedicated to our Native American heritage. And I would like to encourage this Human Relations Commission to take a look at maybe making a recommendation to council or to the mayor or whoever, that a resolution be drawn up honoring and recognizing Native American Heritage Month. Because, as the old saying goes, it takes all kinds to make a world. Black, white, Native American, Hispanic. So I think that's something that we should recognize. We shouldn't forget about that. And secondly, and, and, and I'm probably going to, I was sitting back here listening to the conversation about police interaction a little bit ago. And I just have to ask, is this a problem in the city of Troy at, at the current time? Not that I'm aware of. No, okay. Thank you. Because I think we're overreaching a little bit. I think we're, 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 we're creating a solution in search of a problem. And I don't mean this to offend anybody. Believe you me. I just think that we have, I think we have a very fine police department. We, we, we're lucky. We're very lucky. We have fine police officers, fine command staff, and they should be, I, I applaud them. I really do. I've been on the wrong side of the law. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the first, I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. But I think a lot of what police interaction goes back to is how you're taught as a young kid from a very early age, either you're taught to respect the law or you're taught not to. It goes back to what I call home training. I was taught from a very early age to have a healthy respect for the law. Like I said, I've been on the wrong side of the law, but it doesn't diminish my respect for the law enforcement officers any, anymore. they got a job to do, just the same as all you do. So I'm just kind of wondering if this is a, 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 a solution in search of a problem. Uh, are we allowed to comment on that? When he's done. Oh. Okay, well, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Kane. Please do. I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. I think, um, not to say it was an insinuation, but um, culturally, mm -hmm. speaking of, and watching the news, um, I think for a lot of families mm -hmm. of different cultures, um, from what they've experienced and um, from what they've seen, um, I believe that to assume that's always how it's taught in a household um, is not always the same just because of, you know, emotions and experiences that different people have go through. And I'm not going to say one culture versus all other because it could be no. any uh, experience with um, policing in any way, shape, or form. So I think it's just making sure that we create an opportunity, whether that's being taught at home or not, um, so that people feel comfortable around our wonderful police department <laughs> and understand, you know, both sides of the reflection. Yeah, and like I said, I, I don't say that to be to be offensive or anything like that. It's just something that I've always believed in. I, I, I think it comes from your experience, uh -huh. right? I'm right. I'm just assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're assume, you assume correctly, Marvin. I, I'm not saying, and there's no right or wrong. There's no right or wrong here. That, so my experience has been. Um, I've had nothing but great interactions with almost every police officer that I've ever come in contact with. Right. But that's, that's my experience. Mm -hmm. A lot of other people have a different experience. So the whole point here is our goal as a commission is mm -hmm. to help all people. And the reason that this commission was put in place stems from systemic issues in our society dealing with African Americans and the police. Right. We were there with Rodney King. We were there with so many. There's so many names. I, I could sit here for it for an hour, and I know them all. Right. And it's not that they were raised any differently. It was simply because of a miscommunication or a skin color. There's mm -hmm. bad apples everywhere. So even if we go through training, we're still going to have issues. Mm -hmm. But our goal is to help who we can help. And if there's a solution to help 
someone. But do you think? It, but do you think? But do you think making it a state issue is your job? So let me ask you that. I'm sorry. I no, go ahead. Yes. I just I just want to speak from the city of Troy as a city Troy commissioner mm -hmm. and as a mother in Troy. Mm -hmm. um, you're never going to become a mother. I was going to say <laughs> when you become a mother, but I, when, I, I, let's, let's, I, let's when my change. children are in the car mm -hmm. and my children, and I'm not even talking about us being in Troy, but mm -hmm. if they fear mom's driving too fast, going to get a ticket, never seen fear in their eyes mm -hmm. like I do if law enforcement was involved. Now, prior, I was isolated. I didn't have relationships with law enforcement, right? They are right. the coolest uh, guys that I know right now, right. but you have to understand that there is a large group of people that just don't have access to have a fair chance to have relationships with our officers. I actually think, although we talk about police interaction, police interaction, we're really trying to help the police do community interaction. We're really advocating for people that can't advocate or don't understand how to advocate for themselves. Systemically, it's not just a state problem, it's a nation problem, right? Right. So we are very blessed to have Chief McKinney, mm -hmm. um, who has cleaned up a lot of things in our police department. I'll say that twice if I need to. <laughs> Sean has done a damn good job, excuse my language, and we had phenomenal officers that probably wanted to scream prior to that, right? Because one apple can ruin the bunch. So again, we are trying to help our officers um, build better relationships with the community, and it's not their fault. We're fighting media, we're fighting upbringing, we're fighting economics, we're fighting color, we're fighting classism, and we can go on and on. We don't think it's our job to heal the state, but we like to think we're leaders in Troy, right? I right, think we're right. Good at leadership, and if we can have that opportunity to not only make Troy better for citizens and police, and if we can be the model for the state, so be it. That's that's our intent. And I'll tell you what, I'm 100 percent in. I'm 100 percent with you on that. I just was sitting back there listening to it, and I had all these thoughts and, and thinking rolling through my mind, yeah. and it's like, what is the problem? Perfectly fine. I, I mean, I what told, is the problem? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, if you want to hang out in my neighborhood for a while, um, maybe I can make a real life simulation for you and you can see and you'll probably be just as sad as me because what you see in the media is not a reflection of choice. I've been in your neighborhood. I've, I've, I've been around your neighborhood. I've been around your I've been I've been around your neighborhood and, and believe me, it's not you're right. We we are lucky in the city of Troy that we don't have the problems that yeah. a lot of other communities have. We don't. And there are some things that we do that we'll never know because we're not a part of those Dark right. Brad, it, it, right. I'm sorry, Sonia, but You're Brad, right. it, it, look, it's, it, I, I would disagree with your assessment. I do think it's part of what the HRC is designed to do. And if you, and I know I don't think they were recorded, but back to when this conversation initiated, it was designed to be obstructive for people, probably irregardless of, or and that's not even, regardless of race um, or origin or anything else. How to handle a situation? I mean, we we've all seen videos of the instead of hands at whatever that is ten, ten and two, two. <laughs> reaching you know reaching this way. Well, mm. if you're on high alert and someone's reaching this way, you don't know if they're reaching for their driver's license or they're reaching for mm -hmm. a, a knife or a gun. Yeah. That's what I think the conversation at least yeah. initially started was how can we train people to interact, you, you know, not not give up their constitutional rights, not do those things, but how can we have an interaction? And the way that it was discussed to do that was possibly incorporating that into the driver's education because the majority of these incidents uh, are commenced at traffic stops, and so I, I don't want to speak for Marvin, but I think I, I don't think it was anything beyond. I, I mean, not that that's not good, but I don't think it was designed to, to create some earth-shattering changes to the world. I think it was designed to put together some instructive uh, processes so people knew a what was within their rights mm -hmm. and b how to exercise their rights so that they didn't create situations to put police 
or individuals into harm's way. And like I said, like I said, I appreciate that clarification because clarification, I was sitting back here listening to this, and I just thinking, do we really have a problem with it? We do. We have a problem even who we're going to talk to about it. And that's part of the problem is a lot of people think there is no problem. Because well, they're not in that environment. When you you're not in that environment, you don't know. We have a conversation with a state representative that thinks that black people don't wash their hands. Okay? We have a problem. <laughs> oh, boy. Right? Good luck so with that. So all the way through, honestly, and then you'll see that things exist. Mm -hmm. It's tough. And, and maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's why I have my blinders on. I don't know. Okay? But that's what we do this for, so we both can learn from each other. So I thank you for being open with your questions. And, and, and last but not least, if you guys remember back when you, and how you were, Herbert, or Kenneth, I'm sorry, you weren't on commission yet. If you remember back, way back when, you were, had a discussion about going to quarterly meetings, I issued you a little bit of a challenge back then. I said, take the time between your quarterly meetings to get out in the community, listen to your citizens, find out what it is they want, and then work on that. Have you guys, uh, Done anything with that? Has that gone anywhere? That's yeah, not every what day, we discussed every today. Day. Every day, yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I'd like to renew that challenge to you. You know, um, I, really, I think you guys are doing a good job. I really do. If I, trust me, if I, if I could, I'd move into the city of Detroit just so I could have a chance to sit up there with you all. Because I think what you guys do is good work. And, uh, Thank you, Todd, for reminding me that this meeting was tonight because I probably would have still been at home. <laughs> That's all I got. You're welcome, Blaine. Thanks for coming in. Anything else? Oh, Mr. Scott. I'm going to be really quick. <laughs> I have been AWOL from your meetings for a really long time, and I will be maturing a little bit more on February 16th, um, turning 58, so I won't be here in February, but um, I'll be here to support in the future. I have copies today um, for all of you of um, the Foundation Statement of Inclusiveness that we passed at our governing board um, in December. And um, I'm not going to take the time to read it, but I am going to read what it encompasses as far as inclusiveness. But I need my cheaters for that. Um, diversity encompasses but is not limited to age, gender, race, national origin, philosophy, religion, physical and or mental abilities or characteristics, sexual orientation, gender identity, economic circumstances, and lifestyle. And I think that this policy was expanded um, by our organization, inspired by the work that you are doing, as well as IDEA Troy, as well as the collaborations that are going on with the MLK group. Um, you know, there, there just is a, a, a large amount of collaboration um, that is going on, and we needed to be a part of that. Um, this will be, this has been adopted by our board, but by the end of 2023, we are going to require all of our nonprofit organizations to adopt something like this in order to receive future grants. We want to know that we are serving all people of Troy and not just some people of Troy. So I'm going to leave this with Salome. And you can all have a copy of it. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. I wish I had a mic and literally draw. That was definitely. Thank you for coming in and sharing that with us. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Thanks for all you do. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one to close on. Wow. Yeah. That's that's impressive. Yes, yeah. very impressive. Yeah. That's a that statement. Sit here. That's why. Because yeah. own organization, I couldn't even get that statement. Yeah. Wow. Well, I like to adjourn our meeting. All in favor of adjourning? Uh, I don't think we'll ever beat that. Yeah. So that's good. Oh man. So move. <laughs> well. Thank you. She just wants Martin, thank you for your leadership.